Welcome back, guys. Um, doing a topic today that's another general topic and a little less geared towards the guys who are coming into the industry. Um, it's going to affect you, but you're also not going to know that it affects you necessarily. And that is e logs. Um, Prime has been on e-logs since, I believe, 2009. Uh, e-logs are electronic logs. Um, and basically, electronic logs are... Uh, basically, let, let's start with what logs are. Um, for new guys that don't know anything, you have to log everything uh, that you do. Um, driving, on-duty time, which is work that is not driving... So pre-tripping, post-tripping a vehicle, if you're being inspected, if you go through a way station um, and get pulled in for an inspection, anything like that, um, while you're unloading, all that sort of stuff, that is on-duty time. And then you have to log off-duty time, which is anytime you're not working. Um, so as an example, I am waiting right now. I am off-duty uh, as I wait for the uh, receiver to uh, open up the uh, um, garage door and I'll back in. And then there is sleeper birth time. That should be pretty obvious. You have to be in the bunk. You have to be in the back of the truck. Um, if you go home every night, as an example, I log very, very little sleeper birth time. Because if I go home at night, I don't log sleeper birth. Because I'm not sleeping in the back of my truck, I'm sleeping in my bed at my house. So that's not sleeper birth. So you need to log all of those sorts of things. Um, there's hours of service rules, which dictate how much time uh, you can spend driving, how much time you can spend on duty, and all these sorts of things. The basic breakdown is you can drive 11 hours uh, a day, and you have 14 hours, once you start driving for the day, you have 14 hours in which to accomplish that 11 hours driving. If you drive five hours and then you sit somewhere for five hours, you can't drive six more hours. Um, that 14 hour clock starts and doesn't run out. Um, it, I shouldn't say it runs out 14 hours later. Just because you, you take a five hour break um, you, you've only got four hours remaining, so you don't have the six hours of drive time left. So your 11 hours of driving time has to be accomplished within that 14 hour window. Um, there's other rules. You have to take a DOT mandated 30 minute break sometime within the first eight hours of driving. Um, then you get more complicated in terms of the 70 hour clock. Uh, you can be on duty and driving a total of 70 hours. Um, and that clock continues to wind down. Once you hit your 70 hours, you either have to do a 34 hour restart, which after sitting off duty or combination of off duty or sleeper birth, you get your, for 34 consecutive hours, um, you're gonna get your 70 hour clock back. Um, or after, and then like I said, this gets a little more complicated. After eight days, you gain back what you used um, eight days previous. So now that we've got all that, there's two ways to handle, and I should have grabbed this before um, to make this a little easier, but I'm going to grab a log book. As long as we're talking e logs. It's my permit book, and the old-fashioned way to handle is with, this is a paper log, and if you've never seen a paper log, this is what a paper log looks like. Um, they have an example in the front, I, this one doesn't actually have an example in the front. At any rate, uh, basically it's a graph where each line off duty sleeper birth driving on duty it accounts from midnight 
to midnight for whatever day. So you've got a lot of things to fill out on here. Every day you've got to have the month, the date, the number of miles you've driven, your tractor number, your driver code, your driver log ID, your co-driver ID, number of hours worked in the last seven days, your seven days total, trip numbers for that day that you've driven, your daily vehicle inspection report is on here, your signature, um, you got to log the locations. So there's a lot of stuff you have to fill out on this particular um, form. And then you go to the Qualcomm and e-logs. And the topic really is more, to me, hours of service. Basically, the uh, FMCSA, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, has mandated that paper logs are going to be done away with. Now, I have one paper book of paper logs in case the Qualcomm malfunctions or it loses power or anything like that. I have to be able to keep a paper log in case that happens. However, the FMCSA has said that the paper logs are gonna be going away because there are companies that still use just the paper logs and they have been doing that, have never switched over. Prime, like I said, has been using the e-log since 2009. There are other companies that have been using them a little bit longer, but uh, shortly, I believe it's December, they're going to have a mandate that everybody goes on to e-logs. And there's a lot of people who are upset about that. And my personal opinion is people shouldn't be upset with e-logs because really once you use e-logs, they are so much easier than paper logs. Um, you don't have to do anything. You, you, you change your status. You change your status from on-duty, off-duty, It'll automatically change you to driving. Once you start driving, after you're down the road two miles, or after you've been driving for five minutes, which I mean, because you can creep along, after five minutes, it's automatically going to turn you over to drive. And uh, sleeper burst. So that's all you do is you manually change that. But the miles driven in a given day, automatically tracked. Locations, which is something that you keep track of for logging purposes, for fuel tax purposes, the IFTA tax purposes, all kept track of by the, uh, the e-logs. What I think people mistake or confuse when they talk about e-logs and say, I hate the e-log mandate, they're really upset about the hours of service rules. What we talked about at the very beginning about 11 hours of driving within 14 hours, the DOT mandated 30 minute break. Because all e-logs do is they strictly force you to adhere to the hours of service laws. Um, it makes everything else, all the paper stuff that you have to fill out, you don't have to do any of it. It's so much easier. Because I've done paper logs. Before I drove truck, I, I kept paper logs when I drove bus. Um, and it's a pain in the behind. This is so much easier. I understand the fear and concern for drivers who don't like, as I said, I'd like to drive five hours, take a five hour nap, drive for five more hours, six more hours, and get my driving done that way. Well, this, it's not that it's gonna stop the truck and not let you do that, but it's gonna log you and show you in violation of the hours of service. And then the next time you get pulled over or pulled into a way station, you can submit your logs electronically, either by email or fax, from the Qualcomm, and send it to the uh, either motor carrier specialist or uh, the state police, and they're going to see that you violated your logs. And like I said, when you did paper, you could fudge your logs a little bit and make it seem like you were running legally, and it's not going to be able to do that with the e-logs. So that's really, I think, the issue. It's not the e-logs. The e-logs, when people use them for the first time, I think people are going to like that aspect of it. The aspect that I understand and you will never get away from, and what I think people really should focus on is the hours of service. If you do not like the letter of the law of the hours of service, all the e-logs do 
is force you to, and, and again, it's not really forcing you to comply, it documents your compliance with the hours of service. Like, so again, to me, if you don't like the hours of service rules, complain about the hours of service rules. Don't complain about e-logs. Because e-logs are not your enemy. They make your job a lot easier. Um, take a lot of the paperwork away. Um, but hours of service, I'm right with you. I, I'm a big fan of e-logs. I'm not a big fan of hours of service rules. Um, so that's my two cents on e-logs. Um, they are coming. Even if OIDA, uh, if you're not familiar, owner, operators, uh, um, associate, independent, uh, independent operators, uh, drivers association is still trying to fight the e-log mandate. They very well, well may get it delayed. They have done so in the past. Uh, it seems like it's an uphill battle this time. I do think that eventually they will, even if it's not this time, it's, it's coming. E-logs are coming. Um, but again, I think the problem is not the e-logs. The problem is the hours of service rules. And the hours of service, to me, just as an example, um, I just got here to my receiver. As an example, let's say that this receiver can't unload me for 10 hours. Say I sit here for 10 hours. It's 6 o'clock in the morning. Well, I drove all night to get here. Well, not all night. I drove about, it's about five hours, including a fuel stop to get here. So I woke up at one o'clock this morning, drove to get here at six. Now let's say the receiver can't take me for 10 hours. My e-log is going to say you have, and I stay off duty because I sit here because I'm wide awake. So I've only been up for five hours. Well, now I sit for 10 more hours. The e-log is going to show that I have full drive time because I will have been off duty for the 10 hours waiting to unload. I'll have been up for 15 hours. The information in the Qualcomm obviously is displayed back for dispatchers, fleet managers, all those people to see. And when you say, I'm tired, I can't drive, and they say, well, you have a full clock of 11 driving hours, why can't you drive? That's where the captain of the ship argument comes in, and you have to be strong enough to say, I couldn't nap because I was sitting waiting to unload, and I'd only been awake for 8, 10 hours, and then they implied that they were going to unload me, that sort of thing. Um, so that's the only issue with the e-logs, is it can show that you have drive time available, and your company has to understand, hey, you might have been awake, even though you're showing drive time, you, you've been awake for X amount of time, and it's probably not safe. And that, it, It's up to you. If you say, I can drive, and you drive because you're tired, because you've been off duty for 10 hours, that's, that's on you. So that's my thoughts on e-logs. I think the issue is more with the hours of service. It's with the fact that the companies can see your available drive time as opposed to the driver telling the company. Because with paper logs, if they say, do you have drive time and you're tired, you say, nope, I don't have any hours left. Uh, but again, I, I think once drivers experience e-logs and how much less paperwork and how much less of a headache they have to deal with, I'm a big fan of them. Um, but again, I'm not a fan of the hours of service, and I'm not a fan of the fact that uh, that portion of it can be used to pressure a driver. Um, and, and if your company tries to pressure you to drive, uh, that's a, that's a no-go to me. I, I'm not a fan of somebody saying, hey, I don't care if you're tired, you need to drive. You need to be smart enough to say, hey, it's not safe, I'm going to park the truck. So there's my thoughts on e-logs. Thanks so much for uh, watching this week. And uh, we'll talk to you again next week.